requires until in what? In excess. Therefore, we are going to add potassium iodide, ladies and gentlemen. So, we are going to pick the third test tube, okay? Clean as it is, okay? And then we pick a small portion of our sample. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. Now, to give you a hint, okay, about what we actually expect, ladies and gentlemen, should we add potassium iodide, ladies and gentlemen, and our solution remains colorless like the one you're seeing inside the test tube. Hope we can all see the colorless what? Solution. Should we add potassium iodide and the solution remains colorless? Are you seeing the colorless solution, ladies and gentlemen? So, should we add potassium iodide and the solution remains colorless? Ladies and gentlemen, we shall confirm aluminium. Should we add potassium iodide and we see anything to do with yellow? Anything to do with what? Yellow. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't confirm anything else apart from lead 2. Okay? So ladies and gentlemen, be prepared. We are moving to the part of adding potassium iodide. Okay? So this is potassium iodide solution, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you who are watching, you can see KI standing for potassium iodide. So this is potassium iodide solution. Okay? And our solution is colorless. So ladies and gentlemen, we are going to add potassium iodide and see what we shall observe. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. So we are adding slowly by slowly. Oh, wonderful. So we have seen, we have actually seen yellow. I don't know whether the majority of you out there are seeing yellow. Are you seeing that yellow? Ladies and gentlemen, that yellow tells us that actually this solution contains lead to ions. That yellow you are seeing. Hope you have seen the what? The yellow, ladies and gentlemen. This is our yellow. And our yellow what? Yellow precipitate. Okay? So because we have seen a yellow precipitate, ladies and gentlemen, we therefore write and say, okay, a yellow precipitate. Yellow precipitate. Insoluble. Yellow precipitate insoluble in excess. And what did we say about that, ladies and gentlemen? We said the moment we see yellow with potassium iodide, we confirm nothing else apart from lead to ions. Therefore, we go ahead and say lead to confirmed. Okay? So, that is where we are, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Lead to confirmed. Okay? Now, after confirming our lead to, the last bit of it wanted us to write down the cation in chew. What is a cation? A cation is actually a positively charged ion. So, of the positively charged ions, which ones have we confirmed? We have confirmed only one, which is lead. Therefore, our cation here, we write it down and we say lead two. Then, we come to the anion. An anion is a negatively charged what? Iron. Which anion did we confirm, ladies and gentlemen? Let's go back to the first bit of it. Remember where we talked about the brown fumes? We confirmed the nitrate iron. We confirmed the nitrate what? Iron. Okay? So there we are. We confirmed our nitrate. Therefore, it is the very nitrate that we shall bring down here. And we say NO3 minus. NO3 minus. Lead iron PB2 plus. Okay? Now, what are some of the mistakes that candidates actually make? The majority of the candidates write to T. Instead of two plus, what do they do? You find a candidate writing something of this nature. Two 
and then they do this. This is actually a two T. So you have to be very careful as you write down some of these things. Write it as a plus sign. Don't write two T, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So the moment you write two T, you'll be in for it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, how do we award our um, our marks, ladies and gentlemen? Let's go back from the very beginning. Okay, they told us heat a spatula end full of chew. We saw what white crystalline solid that statement earns you half a mark. Okay, and since it was that white crystalline solid, and we said zinc, aluminium, lead, calcium, ammonium, magnesium, each of these that is correctly written will earn you half a mark. So you get half a mark for that, half a mark for this one, for that one, this one. There, there. Oh. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can see. Tell me, how many marks do you have so far? Okay? How many marks do you have so far, ladies and gentlemen? You can see. One, two, three, and a half. You already have three and a half. What? Marks. So, you have to be very careful. We are continuing. Decomposed with what? A crackling sound. Crackling sound. Half a mark. Okay? What? A mark. Making it four marks. Okay? There we are, ladies and gentlemen. Forming a reddish brown solid when hot, yellow when cold. Reddish brown when hot. That one will earn you half a mark. Yellow when cold will also earn you half a mark, ladies and gentlemen. There we are. And because of that, each of these these two are correct. Each one will give you half a mark, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, we come and get half a mark. We also get half a mark for writing down that. Okay? Then we continue. Brown fumes. Mentioning brown fumes. That is half a mark. Okay? Brown fumes did what? Turn moist blue litmus to red. Moist blue litmus paper to what? To red. So, therefore, you get that one as well for turning moist blue litmus paper to what? To red. Okay? Then, droplets of a colorless what? Liquid. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that colorless liquid is water. But how do you confirm that it is water? You have to make use of what we call anhydrous copper to sulfate solution. Now, or as I mean anhydrous copper to sulfate. It is crystal, they are crystals actually. It is not a solution. Okay? So you add small drop small small crystals. Okay? Do you add small what? Crystals of the anhydrous copper to sulfate. So when you add it to the droplets of the colorless liquid, our white anhydrous copper to sulfate crystals will turn blue and then you end up saying that that liquid is what is water but how do you write it in in our deduction we just say hydrated the compound is what hydrated so you get the mark so had we added okay the anhydrous copper to sulfate and we actually saw them changing to blue then we would have clearly written it here and would make our deduction that our salt the substance that was heated is actually hydrated but of course we saw the droplets of the color